Tonight, a breakthrough for cord cutters. Another Bitcoin bank gets hacked. Radio Shack loses a big chunk of its stores. And how to be a trailblazer without getting fired. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 36 for Tuesday, March 4th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Lane, back from vacation. A little tired, a lot sunburned, but happy to see you. Let's get right into the tech feed. PlayStation 3 owners have HBO Go access starting today. The company has announced on its official PlayStation blog. The app lets customers watch the premium channel's catalog on demand as long as they have HBO subscriptions. Phil Rosenberg, an executive at Sony Computer Entertainment America, said today that the company is, quote, working diligently with HBO to bring the HBO Go app to PS4. In more interesting news, perhaps for actual cord cutters, satellite TV operator Dish has announced a content deal with Disney that continues Dish's rights to carry Disney networks like ABC and ESPN, but also includes rights to use those same networks for an internet-based pay TV service. It's the first time a major broadcaster has signed an a la carte deal in the U.S. Bloomberg reports sources that say the service would be priced somewhere between $20 to $30 a month and Dish has agreed to put limits on its ad-skipping technology in return for content. Well, Apple's first iTunes festival in the U.S. starts in seven days at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. And during Fireballs, John Gruber says, a source tells him it'll stream over an app that requires iOS 7.1. Now, the fifth and most recent developer preview of 7.1 was released four weeks ago from today. The public release was rumored to be slated for March, so we may see iOS 7.1 the iTunes Festival app, and hopefully a few big bug fixes any minute now. In the latest in Bitcoin news, the Japanese government has become the first major economy to define the virtual tender not as a currency, but as a commodity like gold. Gains from trading Bitcoins on online exchanges and purchases, purchases made with them will be subject to Japanese tax, Banks will be prohibited from handling them, and securities firms will be barred from brokering Bitcoin trades. Meanwhile, Bitcoin bank Flexcoin has closed down after hackers stole 896 Bitcoins in an attack on Sunday. A company's statement reads, quote, As Flexcoin does not have the resources, assets, or otherwise to come back from this loss, we're closing our doors immediately. But not all Bitcoin news is bad. Overstock.com CEO Patrick Burns says that Bitcoin holders have spent more than $1 million at the company and that he expects Bitcoin sales to reach $10 million or even $15 million by the end of the year, up from an originally expected $5 million. Well, Radio Shack could close up to a fifth of its total stores or 1,100 stores in the U.S. after a big drop in sales over the holidays left it with a $400 million loss in 2013. $400 would be a lot better. Radio Shack would continue to operate more than 4,000 locations, though the company says some of its suppliers have demanded letters of credit to guarantee they'll get their money. Radio Shack believes it has enough cash and enough borrowing ability to cover its needs for the rest of the year. Coming up, how many Americans believe that HTML is something you really, really, really don't want to catch? The findings from one study will surprise you. And up next, Harper Reid, former CTO of Obama for America and Threadless, is here to talk a little bit about how to be an agent of change without getting canned. But first, let's thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of TN2. With lynda.com's thousands of video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms from industry experts. With a subscription, members get unlimited access to tons of online video courses covering technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. Topics cover photography, software, web design, even learning programming, literally hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device. The instructors are all accomplished professionals. They're experts in their field. 
They're really passionate about teaching. And you can either learn from start to finish or just jump in at any point in a course to find a quick answer. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. <clears throat> All right, joining us now is Harper Reed, the CEO of Modest and former CTO of Obama for America and the former CTO of Threadless. Hello, Harper. Hello, hello. How are you doing? You know, everything is great in balmy Chicago. Yeah, I've heard. You've had a really mild winter this year. You know, it's 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 pretty much just been lawn chairs and shorts. Um, but, you know, we're hoping that next year maybe it'll hit us a little harder. Yeah, you know, it's nice to have seasons, right? Yeah, yeah, we have two right now. <laughs> exactly. Winter and non-winter. Yeah, well, you know, it's going to be a great March. I'm mm -hmm. sure of it. So you're, I know you're traveling to South by Southwest, which is part music, part film, and certainly part interactive con conference down in Austin next week. Uh, and you're at, in a, involved in a, in a panel there. What, yep. are, what are you guys going to talk about? Well, you know, the panel title is about not becoming Ned Stark or how do you be a change agent in an organization that may not necessarily like your changes. Oh. And... Um, I think we've all kind of seen this happen where, you know, we've been involved with an organization and maybe we have ideas or maybe we have some um, product ideas or programming ideas or it, really anything. And there's a lot of kind of pushback or negative energy surrounding that. And we're going to talk about it's a good group of people um, all talking about kind of our backgrounds and what we have seen as change agents in various organizations. Now, without um, too many spoilers for anybody who says, who's Ned Stark? This is a person that well, he received a very, very grave price for for being a dissenter. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is, you know, it's not just, I don't think dissenter is the right word necessarily. I think what we're talking about is just someone who is looking to um, make things better, but sometimes um, disrupt the kind of um, normal way things are going. And, um, you know, we see this a lot in politics, but I actually think we see it more inside of corporations and more inside of big legacy organizations um, where you have, you know, they oftentimes will say, how do we get more young people involved? Or how do we get more people to have a progressive view about what we're doing? Um, but yet when they get those people, they're not quite ready for what they may say, um, because that's kind of, it's a scary, it's a scary thing to do is really open up and let people do whatever they want or do some changes and whatnot. You obviously have some history. You mentioned politics. You were the CTO of Obama for America. And, and this is, you can certainly, yeah, at least whatever your political views say, this is an organization that was trying to uh, create some new definitions for what we all mean right. as a country and, and, and how we work together. What were some of the challenges that you faced uh, based on this idea of trying to be an agent of change and getting a lot of pushback? Well, what we, you know, what we set out to do was pretty straightforward. We set out to kind of bring technology to a place that doesn't normally have technology. More specifically, politics has always had kind of technology come in second or third place behind all the things that actually should be first place. Um, and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to pair those two things together to kind of go hand in hand where we're doing organizing and all of this really important stuff and give technology tools to our most important volunteers and the people who are actually doing the hard work. Um, and so what we brought into the organization was a lot of tech folk from startup backgrounds and a lot of people who didn't actually know anything about campaigns. And so um, it was actually kind of tricky. Um, and a lot of it was... Um, you know, it was it was about trust, really. You know, if you break it down, what you're really talking about is trust, the lack of trust in the organization, the lack of trust of these kind of insurgents um, who are coming, the change agents. Um, and it goes both ways. And so, you know, it's a it's about a it's about balancing trust. And that's not a very um, tricky or it's not a very hard thing to or easy thing, I should say, I guess I'm getting it backwards. It's not a very easy thing to do. 
Going back to South by Southwest for a minute, that this is a this is a place that you know it's full of tech and parties and panels, but it also is the place that historically can really break ground for a new yep. startup who's who's basically trying to get a bunch of people in one place to test out if they've got a good tech idea or not. And often there are a few companies that arrive on the scene at the same time that seem to do mm -hmm. a lot of the same stuff. What do you think is a recipe for success when you've got competition in an innovative space that people are just now trying to understand. There's, you know, this happens all the time. We see this constantly and I actually love it because what I, on the campaign, actually, I, I was in charge of kind of vetting a lot of our vendors and I would have five startups scheduled to, to pitch me on some product and it was all the exact same product. And, you know, some of them were successful and some of them weren't, some of them are still around, some of them aren't. But the ones that I were, was most attracted to are the ones that didn't really pay attention to their competitors necessarily and just paid attention to the to the dream that they were following to their plan and and really were clear about that and saying this is we're not going to be distracted by the people who are doing this similar thing or the same thing um, and I think this is kind of the best path um, at Threadless there were a lot of people who copied us and I remember thinking we can't compete with them even though they're doing some really cool stuff we have to compete up we have to make sure that we're competing with the people who are the status quo not these new upstarts um, and it worked in some cases and in some cases you know we just outlasted them but I think what, it, what you have to do is just remember um, you're there because of your dream and hopefully you will last longer it's a game of attrition probably more so than anything else which is not this is not a positive answer all right. Well, before I let you go, can I just ask you, not to put you on the spot, but if there's a, a favorite Threadless tea um, from the entire collection of Threadless teas over the years that you like best? Oh, boy. This is a hard one. Um, <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. Maybe it was the morning after. Was that what it was called? Um, it was the clown puking know. rainbows. <laughs> Well, that's a good one. Now I know I want see. it. Someone look that up for me. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's called the morning after. <laughs> and it's a, it's a clown puking rainbows into a toilet. Good I think that's my time. Great answer. I really didn't think you were yep. going to say that. Harper Reed, yep. CEO of Modest, uh, former CTO of Obama for America and also Threadless. Tell folks where they can keep up with your work online. Um, you can either follow me on Twitter, Harper, at Harper, or um, Modest.com. We're going to be posting a lot of fun stuff soon, so uh, stay tuned. Sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us and have fun down in Austin. Okay. Thank you. Finally, Coupon's website, VoucherCloud.net, conducted a study recently of 2,392 American men and women over the age of 18 in an attempt to gauge their understanding of tech terms. One in 10 thought that HTML was a sexually transmitted disease. 42% identified a motherboard as the deck of a cruise ship. And 23% believed that MP3 was the name of a robot from Star Wars. Quote, technology is a huge interest for our user base, and month after month, we see thousands of people visiting our site to look for coupons and deals to use when purchasing their favorite tech products, said a company spokesperson to the LA Times. And, quote, it seems that quite a few of us need to brush up on our tech definitions. Just going to leave that one there. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. And do write us with feedback or suggestions at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.